Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, Holiday Inn Express, the Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn, Russell Street Report, the original Green Turtle, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. In April 1959, Art Wall won the Masters, edging out Carrie Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer by finishing birdie, 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 par birdie. One month later, Ocean City Golf Club celebrated the opening of their first 18 holes. That course has been transformed now into one of the most scenic golf layouts on the East Coast. Come experience 36 of the most beautiful and challenging holes you'll find anywhere. Ocean City Golf Club in Ocean City, Maryland. AFC Championship edition of the Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV and the strongest signal Ravens affiliate on Del Marvin 93.5 The Beach. Don't forget kickoff at 6.30, pregame show at 6 o'clock. You can catch all the action there. Guys, you know, we, we've, uh, we've done plenty of these shows over the years with Ravens Steelers and, and we've talked about how close those games have been. You know, you go back to, to 2001 between the Ravens and the Patriots. Okay, now this season, the Ravens at home uh, on a 27-yard uh, Justin Tucker field goal just, uh, just inside the uh, uprights, 31-30 uh, to 30 over the Patriots. We go back to last year, uh, AFC Championship game, we lose 23-20. Earlier, a uh, couple of years before that, we lose 23-20. Uh, we won, you know, in 2010 on the road, that big win, 33-14. Uh, but in 09, 27-21 New England. Uh, two years before that at home, that Monday night game in which we almost spoiled their undefeated record regular season, 27-24. So we have had a lot of close field goal battles with this team. And it could come down to a field goal again. And the weather, which is supposed to be pretty nice all in all in terms of, you know, partly cloudy to clear or clear to partly cloudy skies, uh, 32 degrees right now is what they're saying for kickoff, but the wind could be about 19 to 20 miles per hour. That could play a factor in the uh, in the kicking game. And uh, again, a lot of these games have come down to three points, so we'll see if that happens again, Bruce. You know what the amazing thing is? It, it, let's say it stays in the mid-30s. That is the best football weather that you can have yeah. as a player. As you get up towards the end of the year, you like it kind of cold. The running backs, the offensive linemen love that. Defensive linemen love it as well. You can run. She seemed like you can run all day. Because you got the adrenaline going, you're sitting around, so you, it's good weather to keep your motor working. But at the end of the day, what I'm getting at, if it gets that windy, it's going to be the battle of the quarterbacks. Because both of these men, Tommy Terrific over there in New England, and Joe Flacco got guns. Yeah. And they got big guns. And that wind's not going to bother them as much as it will bother some other quarterbacks. So it's going to be those guys making big plays. The turnover battle will always be part of it. But it's going to be the wits of uh, Joe Flacco and Jimmy Caldwell versus uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, I tell you, it's almost getting to be like a division, divisional type right, game here. Right. I mean, I think it's just the sixth time in four years they've played each other. So, you know, there's not a lot of surprises going on. Now, the New England secondary is completely different uh, than it was yeah. week three. So, and a, a new Aqib Tlaib is, is playing pretty well. So, it's going to be somewhat different. But there's, I think both sides have confidence against the other I, and so I don't think the Ravens are, are obviously going in scared I you know nine and a half points or whatever it is isn't certainly bothering this veteran team and I think the Ravens know they can go up there and win and uh, I think that that big victory and you're talking about points here there's not a single this is number one offense in the in the league yep. and there's not been a single one of these points and they've been number one in the in the league for a long time not a single one of those games they, where the uh, Patriots got 30 points I think so, uh, no so, no. I mean, this is not a situation where the Patriots are guaranteed to, to put up 40 on the Ravens here. And, and the Ravens' red zone defense, Steve, has been stout. So, it's not just enough to move the ball. you got to score points. There's an old saying, you're, every time you kick a field goal, you're three points closer to losing the game. That's right. I think uh, they're a lot like us, where they're, they're improving defensively over the year. They're improving running the game. And... Uh, you know, this may come down to, you know, Hearts may have to hit his brother up for the uh, game plan that San Francisco used against them. And, you know, that kind of stuff does happen, Bruce. You oh, know, yeah. Really. 
They've been on the phone for a long time, all the last two weeks, believe me. Uh, you know, and, and you guys brought it up, you know, going back to what week three in the season compared to now, uh, completely different. You talked about, Steve, the running game. Uh, the New England Patriots have really found a running game, which is scary that that complements Tom Brady, who in the past, whether it be because they just haven't run the ball a lot or because they haven't been able to run the ball a lot because they haven't had that good of a running back, um, although they've had a few guys over the years they brought in, like a Corey Dillon, uh, you know, this time around, they're a little bit, little bit more balanced offense, uh, averaging about 39 passes to 30 rushes a game, which means they're getting off about 70 plays, which is scary in and of itself. But, you know, you talked about Aqib Tlaib, the corner that they traded for from Tampa Bay. He He's bolstering that corner, that uh, secondary. They're moving some guys around that are maybe better fits uh, than where they were before playing out of position. They're more aggressive now. They're blitzing uh, about a third of the time. So, uh, and it's a team too that has more experience, and they changed from a three-four to a four-three this year. So, uh, it's a vastly different team. We talked off air about Vince Wilfork, which is a, he's an absolute beast that is going to need to be double teamed. We talked about Wham blocking, let him get upfield a little bit, and bring an H back around, and you know making him pay for that. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But but uh, it's definitely a different team. You know, Bruce, you've played years where you played a team early in the year and then in the postseason. It's, it's just different. And, and let, let's look at how New England wins football games. New England gets up on you. They put the accelerator down usually very early. They're up 10, 14. And defensively, they can start playing a little bit different. And New England's, New England's being a lot more aggressive than I've seen in the last two or three years out of Bill Belichick's defense. Bill Belichick's not a big blitzer. He doesn't like to send six. He likes to send five and mix it up so you can still play coverage. But the added rusher, the added rushman will give the uh, quarterback some problems, and then he can still play coverages on the backside. So uh, Bell will, will, will take, will take Torrey away. I'll be surprised. If Torrey does go deep for a big play, Belichick will have an aneurysm. He is talking to these guys right now. If Torrey Smith beats any of you deep, I will cut your throat. Then they should be wide open for first downs, moving the chains. I'm because just telling you. Because you're not going to be able to cover both. You're going to bring five. You know, you're not going to be able to cover them deep and cover them short. So it's just a situation where, you know, the, 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 the guys, the, the option reads, need everybody needs to be on the same page, and people need to understand their assignments. And this is the deal. When you're playing teams like the Patriots, you need to execute plays. The Houston Texans came out. They got a big kickoff return to come out, and they wind up kicking a field goal. Uh, you know, uh, and then uh, what's their face? Uh, Brady comes out with a three and out. So these guys are not just automatic on offense. No. You know, you just have to come out and execute against great teams. You need to execute. No, that's a key point because I said as soon as they didn't score a touch on there, I said this game's over. You know, obviously you can't set it, but three points know, closer to exactly. lose. Exactly, you are. You know, you have a 90-yard kickoff return. You get a field goal. I mean, come on. You know, you've got to score a touchdown in the playoffs to win the game. Yeah, Torrey Smith, uh, to your point, Bruce, six catches, 127 yards, two touchdowns in the game in Baltimore. So, yeah, B Bill Belichick should make somebody else beat him. Now, the good news is we've got weapons to do it. Jacoby Jones is another vertical threat we talked about. Dennis Pitta, you know, Anquan Bolden. He can be a real pain in the in the side of the uh, the Patriots defense. So, even though their secondary is better, we'll still take our shots. You know, something we did against Denver guys is – that we didn't do in the first time around. We ran the football and we stopped the run. And that's something that's going to be big again because you don't want to aid Tom Brady with a run game. And, you know, if you can run the football, again, that puts pressure on the defense because they don't know what's coming when it's second and short and third and short. Well, this, this is a team, again, it's a lot like Marvin Lewis's Cincinnati Bengals. When you can do five underneath and two over the top man, uh, it's called Minnesota in some areas, but it's five underneath. Everybody's locked up. And you have two deep, two deep safeties that take away the top stuff. You can, you can convert that into double zone where it all looks so much alike until you can find the mic. And if you watch Tom Brady, every time he's out there, 52's the mic, this guy's the mic. The mic being the middle linebacker, there's the key. If he declares who the middle linebacker is, he'll do his reads off the middle linebacker. And he's the best at it other than Peyton Manning. He will find the mic, declare the mic, and he will know. I guarantee you, Tom Brady in two seconds will know what coverage they're in. Joe Flacco, on the other hand, is not that quite there yet. He doesn't have a huge football IQ when it comes to that. And that's where Bill Belichick's magic will be shown or not shown if he can do that. Because Bill Belichick is going to make Joe Flacco read the defense. And if he can't read it, he can confuse him. That's true. However, Joe Flacco has had some of his best games against that team. I was just so, going to say that. You yeah. know, there's yeah. a confidence factor there, and I think uh, 
you know, I just think this game is, um, you know, again, no reason that the Ravens, that anyone should pick the Ravens to win the game going up there. But, uh, you know, when you have confidence going and you, p and you, and confidence is so powerful. It is. I mean, I mean you is. know this better than any of us up here. You get against a, a team that you just know you can beat no matter who you're lining up. It really just doesn't matter what people like us think. Steve, you take a look at this offense, and, and, and I'll give Bruce's comments too. Uh, you take a look. The offense is quick. They, they run a lot of plays. They get up the line of scrimmage. Then they take the, pe you know, the foot off the pedal. So they play at different paces, but they love playing fast. A lot of the receivers, they're not necessarily vertically guys. Brandon Lloyd is, but they're, they're east-west runners. They run away from the defense. You know, They'll get Wes Welker to run into Ray Lewis' zone and run right by him. I mean, Ray's not going to cover him. They get good matchups, obviously some good tight ends. Gronkowski being out is huge. Hernandez, though, is still a heck of a playmaker out of Florida. Um, you know, and, and they just get good matchups. And now we see they've got you know, two or three different really good backs. And, hey, Denver threw a touchdown pass to their running back. Don't think that they're not going to try to get Shane Vereen on Danelle Ellerby in an in a empty set and try to go the same way that, uh, that Peyton Manning did against us. Uh, they're a mix and match nightmare. I mean, they have quick guys that you can't match up against. And he gets rid of the ball in the second and a half. But the reality is, Pease worked for him for seven years. So, I mean, nobody knows Belichick better than Pease. You know, he's been on the staff. He was defensive coordinator for four years. So, you know, I like our chances. I do, too. And I, th I love that you're talking about that, Steve. That is so important because Dean Pease uh, got a lot of his stuff from Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick got his stuff from the great George Allen who got his stuff from the great George Hallis. I mean, it's all the things in the great Miami defenses. Arnsbarger got his thing, and they all put their little wrinkles and their little things on it, and it matches it up, and it becomes a wonderful chess match. It really does, because what you do defensively against a good quarterback, if they know what you're in, in this day and age with the flags going up and no hitting above the shoulder pads, I mean, it will be a nightmare. You have got to make them at least Think about what they're doing. If they know, it's like that, you know, Thanksgiving turkey, man. I'll carve it up and serve it hot. Guys, we got, uh, we got 60 seconds here, so I want to get your predictions. I'll just say this, though. You know, Tom Brady is a great quarterback. He's a Hall of Famer. But, boy, he's got a heck of an offensive line through the years. He gets a lot of time. But Steve, your breakdown of your prediction. Ravens 42-38. I think it's going to be like last week. It'll be a shootout. I'm not uh... – I'm not changing it up at all. I'm saying Ravens 27, 26. I'm going back. I'm going back to the Kool-Aid. I've been on that Raven Kool-Aid for a long time. I got off it for this Denver game, but I, I believe in them too. 37-36 uh, Ravens. Okay. I, I, I was off last week too, Bruce. I'm on. I believe. I think this is I a believe. team that can do it. So, hey, I, I'm going to go with 27-24. Justin Tucker reverses last year, and we get the win, and we're going to the Super Bowl. Folks, thanks for joining us. Hey, we are back, hopefully, in two weeks. It's the Ravens Rap Show, Comcast Beach TV, and 93.5 The Beach. Go Ravens. Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, Holiday Inn Express, the Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn, Russell Street Report, the original Green Turtle, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome to the Comfort Inn Gold Coast. Conveniently located just one block from the beach and adjacent to shopping at the Gold Coast Mall and the movie theater. Newly renovated and open year-round with a marvelous bayfront view. Visit us on the web at ComfortGoldCoast.com and see our hot deals and great golf packages or simply call our direct reservation line to plan your stay.